Well, good morning, friends. Saturday, which was yesterday, was Amazon Package Delivery Day. And we're working on our Toshiba laptop that in a previous video, we upgraded from a dual-core Pentium P6200 to a first-generation Core i5 540M, which is a two-core, four-thread, 2.4 gigahertz processor. We want to make this Toshiba usable in modern times. I personally do not have a decent laptop right now, and with this rescue, I'm hoping to make it into something that I can use for uh, Windows 10 web browsing and maybe even some light video editing. So we have the Core i5 processor, but currently the battery in this laptop is completely dead. It is dead, dead, dead. There's no other way to describe it. And that's part of the reason why the previous owner gave it up. So we'll take the battery off and set that aside. Additionally, this laptop only has four gigs of RAM. And Windows 10 will run on four gigs, but this laptop has shared video memory with the um, Intel graphics built into the CPU. So we're essentially only getting 3.8, 3.6 gigabytes of RAM available to Windows 10 on this laptop. And if I intend to run Adobe Premiere Pro for my video editing, or I want to have a bunch of Internet Explorer tabs open, that's going to be an issue down the road. Sooner than later, that's, that's going to be an issue. So, the first thing I did was I ordered a battery off of a supplier on Amazon. I haven't opened it yet. This is our first unboxing of what hopefully is a one-to-one -one battery replacement that will actually hold a charge. Because while I can use this laptop on AC power, I can't move around the house with it. I can't go on the patio with it. Not without an extension cord. So here's our battery. And very nicely packed. This cost us $18 plus tax. It used to be that replacing a laptop battery was an expensive proposition and the old adage was, well, if you need a new battery and the CPU's slow, you might as well just buy a new laptop. And there's a lot to be said for that. But there's also a lot to be said for reusing old electronics. And this battery looks really nice. Rechargeable lithium ion. And... This was a one-for-one -one replacement according to the source on Amazon. And it looks perfect. I think the first thing we'll do is put it in and try and fire up the laptop. See if this battery came with any charge, possibly. Fits right in. And let's see what we've got here. And it comes with a charge. I don't know how much charge, but it is booting right up. And that, my friends, is fantastic. So we've got our laptop booting off the new battery. Right into Windows 10. And this laptop is actually fairly quick. All things considered, this is a pretty snappy laptop. Let's see if I can get a little more. There we go. And let's see what kind of charge this thing came with. And it's saying it's got an hour and a quarter left, 52%. So is this going to be a three-hour battery? I mean, that's possible. You know, it's possible all we're going to get out of this. However, we have a functioning battery on our laptop. Excellent. 
So, the second thing we did was, let me shut this down. is we ordered some memory. And our laptop is down. And let's talk about the memory we ordered. So, this Toshiba originally came with two two gigabyte sticks of DDR3 RAM and it runs at 1066. Now, I had two four gig sticks running the 1200 and crash, crash and burn, crash and burn. It would begin to boot Windows and then it would crash and burn. Uh, the memory timings were just too far off. But I found another Amazon vendor that sold two match sticks and I spent $40, including shipping and tax, on two four gigabyte sticks and the most this motherboard will support anyways is eight gigs and it looks like the vendor is uh, for all memory and why did I go with this option instead of an eBay vendor well I'll be honest with you um, the price was about right and I wanted to make sure that these were matching sticks and of course we want to put them in so we get the dual channel mode in. so we will take out the four gigabytes that were in there. And we'll set those aside. And we're gonna open up these. And they're sealed in there quite nicely, actually. So, no real easy way to get in except to cut the bag. But I will most likely try and save the bag for well, looks like I don't have to cut it. Yeah, I do. I'll try and save the bag for future use. Anti-static bags being handy to have around. And there we are. So, we'll set that aside. And we'll put in our new memory. And that's a happy sound when it locks in. And we'll get the second one in. And we'll see if it boots. And then if it boots, We'll try, um, you know, we'll try Cinebench again, just to see, um, you know, if 8 gigs of RAM makes any difference in Cinebench. For this type of laptop, it probably won't, but I feel a lot more comfortable having 8 gigs. Let's see if this will work before we would just begin to boot into Windows 10, and then, like I said, it would crash and burn. And on our third try, so we removed the memory, cleared the power, put the memory back in, cleared the power, put the battery back in, and rebooted. It's just always an issue with the touching the memory, at least in this specific Toshiba. Why? I'm not even sure. However, I'm extraordinarily pleased that, wow. This thing boots extraordinarily fast. In fact, let's do an experiment. Now, I admit that there's basically nothing but a base Windows 10 installation on this laptop. But let's go ahead and shut it down. And let's do a complete cold boot. And let's see how quickly she actually boots up. All right, it's off, completely off. No lights, it's off. 
Let's see how fast it boots and go. Uh, that strikes me as extraordinarily fast for a first generation Core i5 and 8 gigs of RAM. Very clean, very quick boot. So, what we'll do now is we'll check um, CPU Z and just confirm we've got our 8 gigs of RAM all working nicely in there. And we'll go ahead and run Cinebench 2.3 and see what kind of speed we get, if any kind of speed increase. Just see if the whole system feels any snappy or not. So, we've seen the benchmarks, we've seen that we actually have a chargeable battery, we've seen that we are up to 8 gigs of RAM, and we are running a Core i5, even if it's only 2 core 4 thread, this is just basically a web browsing, light tasking laptop. So, we've spent this for the CPU, we spent this for the battery, and we spent this for the RAM upgrade, and this is our total cost of rescuing this older laptop. I ask everyone to please comment and let me know, do you think this was money well spent for a, well, for a laptop rescue that I can actually use on a daily basis? I don't think I would have any issue with, um, with Zoom or with any kind of YouTube activity, or with watching YouTube videos, or maybe even some light video editing and upload, uh, something, you know, maybe maybe an eight minute or less type video. Again, let me know what you think, and um, thanks for joining us today.